has brought us into his banquet in hall, and his banner over us is love. Love is kind. His banner over us is love. His banner. Warm greetings to you, dear viewer. Welcome to Bible Banquet. It's such a great privilege to be in your company once again. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul states that salvation would not have been possible without the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But prior to this outstanding resurrection, the Bible records a number of resurrections in the Old and in the New Testament which give us a better understanding on the biblical teaching about death. Let's talk about resurrections before the cross. I am Samuel Goykuban Four, and today Theodore Dixon and Constance Wusu are our guests. We'd like to spend this Bible study moment together would like you to join us after a word of prayer from Constance. Constance, would you pray for us? Dear Father in heaven, we bow before your awesome presence in humility for your Holy Spirit to guide and direct us during this discussion that we may learn what you want us to understand. Help our listener, our viewer, to also do the same. And at the end, may we make decisions that would help us in our relationship with you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's always a pleasure to know that you're out there supporting and praying for us on our various platforms, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Satellite TV. Thank you for watching. Thank you for praying. And thank you for being there. We're talking today about resurrections before the cross. Um, it's interesting to find out that uh, right from the Old Testament, we, we find this, um, this phenomenon as appearing like a kind of first fruits or, or an announcement, a harbinger of something greater that's going to come when Jesus will eventually die on the cross and, and resurrect for the good of us all. Let's begin from the Old Testament as we take note of some of these resurrections and uh, what we can learn from them um, about the teaching on death and about other things as well. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verses 4 to 7 uh, is one of the texts we're going to read as well as Jude verse 9. Luke chapter 9 verses 28 to 31, First Kings 17, 17 to 24. And Second Kings 4, verses 18 to 21, as well as verses 32 to 37. Interesting narratives. Deuteronomy 34, 4 to 7. Um, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land which I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have caused you to see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his grave to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his natural vigor diminished. Then we move over to the New Testament. We read from Jude verse 9, still from the New King James Version. It says, Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, did not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Amen. 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 Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to 31, reading from the New King James Version. Now it came to pass, about eight days after these sayings, that he took Peter, John, 
and James and went up on the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men talked with him, who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. I'll go to First Kings. First Kings chapter 17 from verses 17 to 24. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick and his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you? O man of God, have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodged by killing her son. And he stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came back to him and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. Verse 24. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. Amen. 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 I'm going to be reading from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 18 to 21. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, My head, my head. So he said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him, and went out. Verses 32 to 37. When Elisha came into the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went in therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes, and he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite woman. So he called her, and when she came in to him, he said, Pick up your son. So she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. Amen. Amen. Beautiful Amen. story. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting stories, really, that we have there. And, and all stories of, of resurrection. Uh, we have a story of Moses, the widow of Zarephath, the Shunammite's son. Um, Deuteronomy 34 verses 5 to 7 speaks particularly about the death and, and burial of Moses. Uh, what biblical evidences do we find concerning Moses' bodily resurrection? And uh, furthermore, what striking lessons can we learn uh, from Moses' resurrection? Right. You know, when you look at the way Moses ended, um, from the passage you read, it appeared there was no hope 
-hmm. It was just the end. You know, it's from a human point of view, from a literal point of view, it was a frustrating end mm -hmm. for a man who had led Israel for 40 years. A man who forsook everything mm -hmm. to stand by his people. But as we go to um, Jude, Jude, you know, to verse see, nine. you know, Jude verse 9 shows the struggle, the controversy between Satan and um, Michael, Michael yeah. over his body, which means there was something. Incidentally, we, we didn't get to know that until much later, you know, when the letter of Jude was written, many, many years after, even after the days of the kings, the history of Israel, look at when Jude was written. That is when we have the insight of what must have happened. Um, again, we may not be able to know when exactly that incident happened, okay, because it was a reflection. Um, but one thing that is important now is, as we return to um, Luke chapter 9, mm -hmm. to see the transfiguration, there we see Moses appearing. And, and he did not appear, you know, as um, a spirit. Mm. He did not appear as a spirit. No, he didn't. He appeared, you know, the Bible tells us that he appeared, um, there's a language that was used for, for the two of them, who appeared in glory. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, they, they appeared in glory and spoke of his disease with him. Okay, so they appeared and they had a conversation with Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was not, you know, in spirit. You know, it was not a shadow. Thank or you. It, it wasn't a dream. Mm -hmm. It was real. They had a conversation, which means Moses' resurrection must have happened before that incident. Mm -hmm. We may not know how, mm -hmm. but that tells us that when Be Moses was buried in the Deuteronomy 32, that was not the end. He resurrected and he, he, he ascended, you know, to heaven. Mm. Well, I, I was just going to add that, and there is no doubt, there shouldn't be any doubt about that, because we know that Elijah did not die. Mm. You know, he was, um, God picked up. him up in the chariots of fire. And for him to come with Moses mm. to Jesus Christ is another evidence that Moses, Moses actually was resurrected. Okay. Now, before you leave, you, you ask about um, lessons. The, the lessons yes. we can get from there. I, I have quite a few lessons. Um, for me, God does not focus on our momentary mistakes mm -mm. or sins as basis for the, his final judgment concerning our salvation. Mm. Mm. Moses made a mistake. God punished him. He said, you are not going to enter. Okay, even though we suffer the consequences, immediate consequences of our wrongdoings, our sins, that does not stop God from the overall picture of our lives. Mm. And that gives me hope. You know, I quickly went to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. For well, God is not unjust to forget our labors of love. And um, in Psalm 109, line 14, it says, As a father pities his mm. son, so mm. also the Lord pities. For well, he knows... No, we add you know, our frame. He remembered that we are dust. Mm. So I can see that God pitied Moses. All his commitments in the life of Israel, in the plan of salvation, you know, bringing it forth to Christ was not forsaken. And, and God, God, you know, took him. It's not just a matter of pitying him. He appreciated Moses. Yeah. All that Moses did, he, he appreciated him. Mm. Um, we also read... Um, other accounts, especially the accounts of the, the widow's sons, two, two different widows with different prophets. Uh, what's unique about these accounts, uh, these ones we found in First and in Second Kings, uh, what is unique and what do they share in common? <laughs> the first thing that struck me about these two women were their faith. Mm -hmm. They were not Israelites. Mm -hmm. One, uh, they weren't. One was uh, a Phoenician. Phoenician, the other one was, Shunammite. was a Shunammite. And yet they believed in the faith, in the God of Elijah. Mm -hmm. And Elisha. Elijah. And El Elijah and Elisha, and they followed. That was one thing that um, struck me about them. Uh, the, the faith of Phoenicia that said, when everything was bad, and she was that, and she kept saying, all is well. 
on the swell, on the swell. Not, she didn't even tell her husband that the, 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 the child was, was dead, dead yeah. on the swell. She's kept, and when Elisha asked Gehazi to go, he kind of pushed, you know, said, you're not the one I'm talking about. I need the man, you know, himself. And so that, that, that faith actually uh, touched me because sometimes we think there are so many people today, maybe they are not really in, in the fold, they are not yeah. Christians, but they have faith. It's just that they have not gotten someone who would help to, to, to pull them up. Mm -hmm. you know? That's one thing. And so it doesn't really matter what we are, where we come from or what we are doing. God sees our need and he sends the right people to us at the right time. Wow. That faith, yes. Yeah, mm. I would say that um, both women were hospitable. Mm. They were mm. hospitable. Yes. You know, um, then we also see that the two stories involve prophets. Mm. Yeah. You know, different prophets, Elijah and Elisha. Um, Constance has mentioned that they were both, okay, one was a widow, mm -hmm. the other one, one had a yes. husband. Uh -huh. um, she has talked about their faith, and I must say that in the two stories, children were involved. Mm -hmm. Children were involved, and then in the two stories, there were deaths. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but different cases. And they were boys. They were boys, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but but on, on, on the long run, we see that um, outside Israel, people feared God mm -hmm. and believed in the works of the prophets. And um, we also see that these prophets you know, did not fail in their duties towards the people, towards, you know, their ministry and towards these people who had taken care of them. Mm. There is something that hospitality brings out. When we are hospitable to people, they will stand by us in times of need. They stood by them and they were able to, you know, declare the word of God. They didn't hesitate in taking care of um, the needs of these people. And we don't know what happened after those the incidents because the story did not continue but i'm sure that the faith of those women were strengthened after you know their children were Came returned back, back to them uh, i'm almost sure that all the people heard about it about these incidences and it drew them to jesus christ um to you know to believe even though they were not jews i wanted to mention something when the other was talking the these two women became vulnerable and Jesus God the prophet's heart went to them seeking them you know trying to help them and that is something that we need to really work on today there are so many people in our community that are vulnerable and yeah. uh, sometimes we are very busy preaching the gospel doing all God's work but we, you know we bypass those people without realizing that they are needy and I just pray that God will open our eyes to see those around us that need our help. They need our help. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we have a number of stories. Um, a time may not allow us to read these stories in full because these accounts are quite exhaustive. But uh, I'd just like to mention for you out there, dear viewer, so that uh, you can have these passages in mind. Uh, and I'll ask um, our contributors to just open to those passages so that you could help us uh, um, understand them better. Uh, the first is in Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 15, and there we find Jesus bringing back to life the, the son of a widow of Nain. She's called the widow of Nain. In Mark 5, 35 to 42, we find another uh, a child, Jairus' daughter, brought back to life. In John chapter 11, um, from verses 4 down, we find Jesus' friend who dies eventually from uh, an illness. Jesus was called. He, he didn't come. Uh, uh, as at the time Lazarus was sick, he died, and four days later, Jesus appears and he brings Lazarus back to life. Now, these are examples of resurrections before the cross in the New Testament. Uh, what key characteristics about Jesus does each of these accounts I have mentioned magnify in relation particularly to our concerns and our daily needs? You know, um, when you look at the story of the woman of Nain, in Luke chapter 7, one thing that is touching is that she did not ask Jesus for help. Mm. In the other two stories we have seen in the, the two women in the Old Testament, they went to the prophet to yes. ask. But these ones, 
the faith of the child was already sealed in the sense that they were going for, they were in a procession for burial. And Jesus saw them going and he mm -hmm. had compassion. So. They didn't ask him. Which means in every situation we find ourselves, we can just remember and be strengthened that Jesus' eyes are uh, on, on us. us. Wow. You know, on us and then he touched the uh, he stopped the procession, touched the baby the, the guy and brought him back to life. I can imagine how imagine the atmosphere that turned, the atmosphere, you know, brought changed him back to life. immediately. So he sees our situations and he, he, it's not just looking at it without doing anything. He's able to do something. Yeah. You know, the Bible text, I said that before you call, I will That's answer. Right. The woman wouldn't have thought about asking him because okay. she had lost hope that mm -hmm. this child was there. But Jesus saw through to her heart and the pain and everything and she went on by himself without any invitation. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that really is very touchy and, and, and helped. And we have out. Jairus, we have Lazarus. What mm -hmm. about those, those accounts? Well, in Jairus actually approached Jesus mm -hmm. yeah. and talked to him. And Jesus was willing to go. But on the way, Jesus was encountered by another need. There was uh -huh. a distraction. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another woman who is interesting that the woman has suffered for Many years. Many yeah, years, yeah. 12 years, I think. Mm -hmm. And the daughter's daughter was 12 years old. old. And I kept saying that this, ch this woman started suffering when, when the, when child, the was child was born. Was. And there were two. So what do you do? Are you going to attend to her or to the little girl? But while Jesus was attending to her, I would say, a message came to Jairus, stop bothering the master. Did, you, the, did Jesus even attend no, to the I'm woman? No, I'm just, I didn't, I'm just want to rush in. The woman <laughs> found her, uh, <laughs> we touched the garment. Yeah, Jesus, yes, yeah, a pause, pause, that's what, pause. I, that's what yeah. I meant by attending yeah. to her, pause and <laughs> in conversation. He didn't just uh, walk, away. walk away because yeah. he had something more important mm. to do. And that is a lesson that I need yeah. to yeah. learn all the time. Even though there was something very, very, um, important. important, he stopped to touch this woman. That's what I would say. I'm not, you, you understand mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, of course. And while she, he was busy with her, a message came and said, leave the master alone, your, your, your daughter is gone. But Jesus understood. He turned to him and probably gave him an eye, said not to worry, right? And both of them went. The interesting thing about this story, another interesting point about it is that after he raised the girl, she said, give her something to eat. But there was something she said that I have been thinking about. I said, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone uh, what about Jesus it. Said, right? Yes. Again, it is his compassion. This girl was 12. I can imagine in, a co in our community now, this is just my imagination. Mm -hmm. It would have been everywhere. She died, she died, she died, she died, you know? But Jesus said, don't tell. Her. His heart of compassion went after this girl. The rumors around her, what people would be, you know, and, and the embarrassment that she would have. He said, don't tell anybody. Just give her something to eat. I don't want to go through all these stories, but, you yeah. know, that's told me. Jesus, heart of compassion, moves around looking for us wherever we are, even when we have not called him. Yeah. He's there He's to help. There. Lazarus yeah. is another case. Mm -hmm. yes, talking about Lazarus's case, you know, Lazarus, Jesus was a, like a household member mm -hmm. of the Lazarus um, family. family. And um, it, it was just an abnormal situation for Jesus to hear that Lazarus was dead and he couldn't come for four days. And Lazarus was really decaying from, from Martha's conversation mm -hmm. with him. But um, Jesus did not come early because he wanted to prove a point mm -hmm. to the Sadducees who, who did, had, not believe. Who did not believe in resurrection. Okay, but even though Jesus came late, in quote, mm. he was still on time. Oh. He was on time because when he came, he showed that the situation was for the glory of God. And particularly in John chapter 11, verse 4, you know, this sickness is not unto death, but that the name of the Lord may be glorified, that the world may know that you are the one who sent me. So Jesus' seeming delay was that God's name be glorified. glorified. You know, yeah. sometimes when things don't work the way we think they should work, we get worried, but God is in the picture. He wants to do it, not that we may take glory, not that we feel, oh, I did it, but that his name may be glorified. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting thing. Eventually Lazarus was, the, you know, 
raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. In John 11, 25, verse 26, and we're going to wrap up with that point, Jesus talks about death and resurrection of the believer. He says, um, he who believes in me, though he may die, yet he shall live. And uh, just after that, Jesus says, he who believes in me will never die. How are we to understand this seemingly opposing statements? We have very little time, but we can't drop this point. As I keep learning how to understand the Word of God, I see that sometimes um, a sentence is made and the next sentence explains the first. So mm -hmm. I think he was saying the same thing. He who believes in me, though he may die, first death, sleep, you mm -hmm. know, resurrection will come, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. It's the same thing for me mm -hmm. because the death we are dying now is sleep. Mm. It's not um, the end it's of the, life. The final death. It's not the final death. Mm. Eventually, we will live if we continue in our faith with mm. Him. You know, so. you know, Jesus will always move from the known to the unknown. Mm. Mm -hmm. He was talking about physical death, and in the midst of that, He was contrasting with He who believes in Him will not die, which means even if the person dies now, now, now. the person will live eternally. Mm -hmm. Of course, we need to know that all these people who died in the Old Testament and were resurrected eventually died again, mm -hmm. okay, including Lazarus himself. Mm -hmm. But there is an eternal life, mm -hmm. okay, that awaits all who believe in Christ. And Jesus was making allusion to that eternal life, which is made possible in and through him. Mm -hmm. wow. And so. he himself is the resurrection mm -hmm. and, life. He is and life. He owns life in his hands and he knows. Mm -hmm. So that second part of the text was referring to the Life second death. Second death, yes, second death. Which, which is what he came to take away from us. He mm -hmm. died that second death, so we don't we have to live. die again. Wow. Right. Peter, would you want to pray for us and thank God for this wonderful gift of life? Father, we are grateful because Jesus has power over death. And we are grateful that we have an opportunity to believe in you, to accept him into our lives. So help us so that although we may die in this part of history, we will have hope of eternal life and we will never die again. Do this for us and take the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for being with us, dear viewer. You have listened to all the stories we've shared with you. Uh, one thing we took away from this lesson is there is hope beyond death, this death we experience right now because Jesus has conquered the second death and so we can live forever. It's a prayer for us that we will be part of that eternal life and it's also a prayer for you. Till we meet again, rather, stay blessed. His banquet in hall and his banner over us is love. Love is kind. His banner over us is love.